You're listening to the Music Educator Podcast with your host, Bill Stevens, the 21st Century Music Educator Man. Podcasting from beautiful Leesburg, Virginia. Welcome to the Music Educator Podcast, bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow. Here's your host and fellow music educator, Bill Stevens. Hello and welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Music Educator Podcast. My name is Bill Stevens. I'll be your host for today. I'm so excited that you're here. It's a glorious day. In fact, it's a glorious new school year. And if you haven't started yet, be sure to enjoy those last few days. In today's episode, Season 4, Episode 35, we're going to talk about the common problems of the oboe. Let's do this. The oboe is a beautiful instrument that is adored in the classical world. It requires regular practice and a set of craftsman skills for creating reeds. Unlike most woodwinds, the oboe is a double reed instrument that comes chock full of unique problems and challenges. In today's episode, we will summarize Mr. Charles West's book, Woodwind Methods, an essential resource for educators, conductors, and students about common problems of the oboe. I've found this book to be invaluable and recommend this book to be in your library of must-haves. Common problems. Problem number one. Problem one is that often oboe players put too much reed into the mouth. When this is done, the pitch will often be sharp. The third space C in the staff will seem out of control and will commonly have an undesirable bright sound. Counter this by taking in less reed and being sure to muffle the bottom reed. Problem number two. Problem number two deals with the reed angle from the mouth. Remember that the oboe needs to be held up and blown more directly into the instrument. Often players assume the 45 degree angle, much like a clarinet, brass instrument, saxophone, or bassoon. When an oboist holds up the instrument, it allows the lower lip to participate in the control of the lower reed. As a result, the sound will be more characteristic than the 45 degree angle. Problem number three. Problem number three is that oboists are using incorrect fingerings. And it is interesting to note that many of the double reed fingerings almost produce the correct note. The problem with these notes is that they will be slightly out of tune and the actual note does not match the characteristic sound of the notes around it. It is common for young musicians to use wrong octave keys or have a tendency to overblow. These students who switch from clarinet or saxophone often use only one octave key, which almost works. Unlike most other woodwind instruments, the oboe is the only one that does not have a natural open fingering. And much like the bassoon, it is one of the few instruments that uses half holes. Problem number four. Problem number four is specific to having a poor reed. It is necessary for oboe reeds to be able to produce a double crow sound when it is placed all the way into the mouth up to the strings. It is important to understand that the low register will not work if a low crow sound cannot be produced. If a oboe double reed is split, it usually means that the reed is ruined. West emphasizes that this is particularly true if the reed is split toward the center of the blade. Poorly cut reeds tend to lack a well-defined heart, spine, and tip. If the reed does not have these features, then it is advisable to consider purchasing from a different brand of reed or find a professional that can make reeds for you. Problem number five. Problem number five involves not truly understanding the different fingerings for F. The regular common Fs provide a solid pitch and characteristic sound, however, should be avoided if the right hand third finger has to slide laterally. West recommends that in the absence of the left hand F key, you should use the forked F key. However, note that this fingering has a less than ideal sound. If the pitch is sounding flat, then consider bringing it up by opening the E flat key with the fourth right finger. Higher quality oboes also provide another option for correcting intonation and improving sound quality 
by playing a left-handed F key with the fourth finger. Problem number six. Biting is today's problem number six. The lips are designed to hold the oboe reed and as a result, they should stand up by their own strength. The lips are not supposed to be devoid of energy or remain static. Rather, the oboist lips should be strong and dynamic in order to make on-the-fly adjustments. Problem number seven. Problem seven is that the oboe is just out of adjustment. Being that the oboe is a relatively complex piece of equipment in comparison to many of its fellow ensemble instruments, it would be wise to have a professional instrumental repair technician make the appropriate adjustments. Problem number eight. And finally, oboe common problem number eight is that the upper octave notes, especially the ones from E natural upwards, have a split sound. It feels as if the note in the upper register is not entirely settled and wants to reside in the lower octave. One reason for this is that there may be water in the octave key. If the E through A flat notes have this problem, then there is water in the back octave keyhole. If you are playing in A through C, then the water buildup will be in the second octave key. To resolve this, Remove the upper joint and swab it dry. Next, use some tissue between the octave keypad and the tone hole. Then close all of the oboe holes on the upper joint and plug the open end. Finally, blow into the reed receiver on the top of the upper joint and open and close the octave key with paper under it. As a result of blowing, you will see small droplets of water on the paper from the small vent hole. Conclusion. In conclusion, the oboe is a fascinating and beautiful instrument. Part of what makes this instrument sing is directly related to its complex construction. With adequate guidance and proper instruction for resolving certain innate problems associated with the oboe, any serious musician will find fulfilling success on the instrument. That is all the time we have for today. I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode of the Music Educator Podcast. It is a true pleasure to share this craft with lovers of music and educators like you. If you found value in today's episode, please feel free to leave a review and rate us on the Music Educator Podcast app, Apple Podcasts, or any other podcast aggregator. Also, please consider supporting the show or advertise with us on the podcast. Information for this can be found in the show notes. Thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you join us next time. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Music Educator Podcast. For the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow, you can subscribe to our podcast on every podcast aggregator or download the Music Educator app for free in the Apple or Google Play app stores. Furthermore, visit our blog at www.bandbuzz.org for additional music education resources. We will see you on the next episode of the Music Educator Podcast. And remember, music can change the world. Hey, everybody. This is Bill Stevens with the Music Educator Podcast. See this episode's show notes for a unique promo code from the Music Educator Podcast to get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn. Get your show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify anywhere you want. Get critical stats to help you grow. Find all the tools and support you need to sound your very best. You can even do video. Really, bring your podcast to life with Libsyn. See show notes for a unique Libsyn promo code and get podcasting.